one guy that considers themselves quite you know, a competent sniper, but without wasting any time, we're going into the first match of the day. It's going to be Europe Street's team deathmatch, first to 500 points. And the early lead is actually not going either team's way, is it? Pretty much just going to be trading out for trading. Now, back to back, you can see they do have, I mean, a tiny lead, two points. I mean, and as I can say that, already gone. Stason and Triada. That's the double kill. The double kill prowess. The second you can get those kills back to back, you can get a little bit of extra points going in for a sniper shot there, trying to pick his location. We can obviously see Deadly right now. He's looking for his ambush point. Wants to pop a little bit of health. Doesn't want to take a fight unless he has full health. I definitely agree with that decision. The damage output that some of those headshots can land can be, you know, no pun intended, deadly if you're out in the open with no armor. But this is one of those maps that if you are up above with a sniper or kind of trying to peek around the corner, you can find yourself in a situation that you're not the most at risk if you're at the distance trying to shoot from beyond. Although I've got to be, I've got to say, considering it seems like um, Yakuza have been doing an amazing job of just constantly getting a lot of kills, we're still pretty even on the point, so it looks like it's really much an even game so far, despite seemingly quite an early aggressive kind of lead from Yakuza. Oh, Stason fumbles his grenade throw there, and that was really unfortunate. He'd surprised uh, Killing Machine and had got enough damage on the board where if that grenade had connected and then he made the ambush, he would have had sufficient life to win that fight. But unfortunately, because he missed it, the 1v1 did yeah, not Yeah, unfortunately, it. Killing Machine walking into the wrong side of town there. There's two people ready with porcupines, ready to take him down. And then Larson getting another kill onto John Wick. And we're basically trading kill for kill here. Very hard to see who's in the lead. However, as I can say that, Yakuza pulling ahead slightly by a couple of kills, but we've already seen there is plenty of time on the clock and space on the on the uh, actual points itself to bring that back. Now, it's always going to be a talking point. Um, it's, it's definitely worth reminding, in case anyone here is new to competitive guns of boom, don't forget that the kill streaks and the extra styles of kills you can get, they do add a significant amount of points. So that headshot will actually give them a little bit of extra points. If you manage to get a grenade kill or a butchered kill or a Anything more than double. a standard kill, right? Exactly. Anything more than a standard kill will give you a nice injection of additional points, which Considering every single game type in the game is points based, least of all team deathmatch, it's incredibly important to be able to do that kind of thing. The killing machine, a just case in point, a killing spree like that. And that individual killing spree by itself has given the back to back the lead to start things off. But again, just barely. This is a complete back and forth. Oh, and then Triada catching yep. him, and there we go. That's going to be something we'll be seeing a lot today with how powerful the shotguns are, the Porcupine in particular. Getting a point-blank shotgun kill and then immediately following up with a with a melee attack from the knife, that is almost enough to practically one-shot most players in the game. It feels like back-to-back -back have been able to do a good job of kind of remaining consistently ahead, but the multi-kills are going in the favor of Yakuza, and I think that's really what, what's showing, that whenever the kills happen, they kind of like manage to sort of snowball effect and as you can see that's exactly why it's now one point separating these two teams it's going to be swiftly undone migs is going to pick one up and get headshot which will reward a little bit of extra but there's not much of this map left to go it's quite appropriate that someone called killing machine is currently top of the score for back to back but at the same time this is still anyone's game What's the approach though, really? Gonza getting a really nice long range headshot with the sniper rifle, but immediately taken down by melee. But this is kind of the story of the match. It's amazing kill, but immediately returned. It's just trading for trading. It's just a question of consistency, right? It's so hard for these guys to survive. Ain't no one getting killed. That's probably gonna be a guaranteed kill for Larson. Oh, but there's a turnaround. I cannot believe Gonza was able to actually defend himself there. I thought for sure he was gonna be a goner, guaranteed. That was a triple. One more kill and back to back are gonna take this map with them being currently the number one team going into this week. They're going to be happy with that result. It's going to put them into a fantastic advantage situation, but they've still got work to go. I think that's why we're starting to see Yakuza be a little bit more defensive. They just need to kind of fortify a little bit. One more multi-kill in their favor, and they're actually going to take this comeback off. But the surprise, and it's not enough. They get ambushed from the top, not watching your head. And because of that, back-to-back -back are going to swiftly punish and take the first map. A strong start for them, for sure. It was definitely hard to call that match for the most part. I think it was very much a, a back and forth. Whenever we'd see one kill, that kind of be immediately traded. Um, and again, Guns of Boom seems to have one of those kind of multiple strategies, right? Where some teams will opt to kind of clump together as a group. Some will kind of split off, go around the side. But Europe Streets, it seems like it's really hard to kind of consistently establish that kind of presence because it's basically just a lot of long corridors, right? Either side, long corridors, right down the middle, effectively one big long corridor. So there isn't really the opportunity for you to sneak around. And of course, shout out to this new graphic we have showing these individual stats and you can see Killing Machine and Larson respectively, uh, to be honest, quite. <laughs> it has detected our observers as players in the match though, so I'm not sure how accurate it's gonna be from back to back side. 
I was going to say, yeah, that seems um, to be a, a little bit interesting right there, as I just noticed it's exactly the same. So I'm ah, assuming... UK Observer did really well. I know, that's like huge congratulations, man. I favor Observer player. 2 over Observer 1. So I'm assuming that graphic wasn't quite ready, so we do apologize. Sorry, for that. guys. But imagine how amazing it will be once that actually starts working. Oh, for sure. How it crucial kind of just, that information It kind of just be. gives us, as commentary, it kind of gives us that, that extra little spice of information, which sometimes you miss. Obviously, you can kind of keep tabs on the points and the score itself, but the KD is actually really important in Team Deathmatch, because fundamentally, if you're getting no kills and dying a lot, obviously you can obviously see you're not as much of a, of a massive asset. Um, but if you're getting loads of assists, that's going to be really important to see because if you're dishing out the majority of the damage, yes, you may not be last hitting, but if you're damaging everyone and you're kind of allowing everyone else to follow up, you're kind of being that thorn in their side. So it's all useful information. Well, it's basically going just into... a question of being able to piece together what happened in the match by yeah. the information you have given. So if a player has like a ton of assists but no kills, and then someone else in the team has basically the amount of kills this other player has as assists, it's a fair assumption that the players are willingly letting certain players get those final hits to get them kill streaks or killing sprees to further extend that point leaderboard. And uh, I'm looking forward to when we eventually have the information to be able to use. But that does mean we're going into our second map, which is going to be Subway Station. So our first King of the Hill of the day, what do we expect to see here? I think we can expect to see what we've always seen. It always tends to be incredibly back and forth on Subway Station. It's all about who kind of establishes that early level of control. I think King of the Hill, it's pretty much uh, a standard. You know, whoever has a good start, they tend to be the ones that take the entire map. And that's because it really allows for a snowball effect. You know, you guys will be noticing how quick these matches tend to go by because at high level where you know the, the, the frags are basically racking up over and over and over again you kind of add an extra dynamic into King of the Hill where we've said it before and we'll say it again it's not necessarily about holding complete control over the point itself because if you're still getting loads of kills and getting those extra bursts of points you can kind of manage to stay on top of a team that holds control but if you do hold control you're in control of their spawns you're in control of how much damage they take as they reach your location so by the time they've even taken the point they're too weak to fight. And then you can simply respawn and just clean house. But we do that back-to-back -back going into this one as the number one seeds for this particular cup. So, you know, albeit not overall, you know, in, in, in every cup from the start to now, but we know they're, they're at least playing well over the last couple of weeks in terms of momentum. And they have won the first game. So all they have to, in theory, do is win one more map and they're going to be in grand finals, which for a team like this, Again, before the Poland Finals, you know they're going to be really happy with that kind of victory. But the question is, Subway Station seems to be quite an unpredictable map. Sometimes it's a complete wash, and we see it over in like two minutes. Um, sometimes it does go down to the wire. And I think it all comes down to how you can control the map. And a huge part of King of the Hill is that early fight. There is always a first group fight right at the King of the Hill point, because both teams have spawned at the same time. They're both going in at the exact same pace. And ultimately, one team is going to win that fight and capture the point. Now. When that initial fight is a complete sweep and one team gets annihilated by the other, that point difference tends to set the pace for the rest of the game itself. So I'm very curious to see how this, this first fight that's about to take place right here. You can see that Triada looks like they have the point. So they took the point, but they lost the fight 100%. And not scouting out Killing Machine and John Wick combined getting that fantastic double kill. So now they have the point. They have a little bit of control. However, that's going to be a very, very weak John Wick finished off by Deadly and Larson together, and now they've managed to take back control of the point themselves. This is a great start. It's that back and forth. It looks like Triada were able to return the favor somewhat. Ooh, and Gods are running in point blank. Killing Machine with that long range sniper shot, and that's three members of Triada taken down on the point. Luckily still getting points, and all four of them. That's the fourth and final one. Back to back, completely seizing control. I mean, that's just straight up coordination right there. Going in as a four-man unit, you know, really sort of deciding who's going to be throwing in grenades, who's going to be sneaking up behind Porcupine's Killing Machine gets another fantastic Barracuda shot. Um, but we'll see how long you can last that. Sniping on this map, it is definitely possible, but uh, you're only really going to be on borrowed time until someone inevitably kind of takes you out on close quarters. So this is such a small map. Yeah, Th and because of the size Ooh. of the map, this right here is what we see a lot. Oh, oh wow, he just walked straight Hello. into a pineapple. That is not what he wants to see. He's going to get taken down. But this is what we see a lot in uh, King of the Hill right now, especially in Subway. It's group fight, team wins, takes the point. And then there's another fight, they lose, take the point. And it's basically them just trading back and forth, which again comes down to how important that first fight is. But there's that immediate turnaround from Deadly. Getting two quick kills, but quickly taken down as well by the Porcupine. Now, the Porcupine being such a prominent... I mean, you could say arguably one of the best weapons in the game by far, considering every player is running it on a map like this, where you're always going to be in shotgun territory near enough. 90% of the game is going to be played from shotgun range. Yeah, it's definitely what you need to factor in. You know, when you kind of look at what's the best and worst weapon, it's not necessarily about stats, it's about pick rate. If you see someone go with Porcupine as pretty much the exclusive shotgun selected, you're pretty much fair to say that the fact that it's almost seen as necessary by the community puts it right the top of the list. 
a deadly trying to find his way in, but he is outnumbered. I wonder if he's seen them, but no, Stason getting a nice shot from a distance, and Larson too. There's one of the first examples of, of teamwork we've seen today from Triada. The problem is they now have control of the point, but look at the point difference back to back. They held the point for so long, those every second counted, ticking up those points, and now they have a huge lead. That said, they still hold power over the point itself, and it, it's not a lot of work until they've been able to undo things. They've wow. done a wonderful job of actually being able to hold this and win the fights. Gonza does take one fight, but he himself incredibly weak. Are we going to see a 1v1 trade? Looks extremely likely. Yes, it will. Deadly is able to finish the job there. And just like that, they've actually been able to claw things back. That goes to show what a little control will do for your team. I mean, they have, but they spent a long time being alive. By then, their grenades are out, their health items are out, and now back to back moving in as a complete unit, taking the point back for themselves. Most of them still have armor. You know, they still have some uses. They weren't going out deadly. deadly at all. They managed to cover every angle except for the angle Deadly was holding control over. Killing Machine is able to secure one kill, which might be the catalyst. They only need 100 more points and they are going to win this. And just like that, you know, they're going to be walking into grand finals. Now, this could be careful. So every time that um, Triada drop a kill now, that's going to be one point closer for losing the series for back to back. They are so close now. Triada fighting back. They have at least taken the point now, so that slow trickling of points is going to be stopping. But there's, yeah, there's, there's no way that Nagahat can uh, actually hold on to the point with the mana. But how do you there. avoid dying oh, in this mix. situation? Yeah, exactly. In that situation, the workload was split so evenly by back to back. It was actually hard to pick a star player. You kind of look at the end game score, and when it's kind of nicely even, you know that in King of the Hill, it's about we took points, we got kills, and we did it all at the exact same time, which kind of shows that if you're a well oiled machine as a team in a mode like this, you're going to be laughing. So we're going to be seeing back to back looking as strong as we expected. They did go into this tournament being the number one team of this specific cup. You know, they're not number one going into the Invitational, but that said, they just look damn good today. 100%, and um, you know, largely why they're going in as number one seed. They've clearly been playing well the last couple of weeks, and the proof is in what we just saw. That's a convincing 2-0. They played that map really well. But again, I think it just goes back to how hard it is to make a comeback in this game when you are down a certain point. Because if you, even if you do manage to eventually bring things back as a team, by then, you have used all of your consumable items for your life, right? You only get X amount of health items, X amount of grenades. And even if you're able to win an amazing couple of, of, of team fights together, eventually you're just going to run out of resources, and it really is just going to come down to, I suppose, just raw ability at the game. And it was their final decision to stick together. They had about 850 points back to back, and they decided that if they're going to kind of minimize the amount of frags that they take, um, not giving up even a small chance for Triada to come back and make this comeback, um, the decision to stick together was a great one because it meant that they could kind of cluster together, really force those kind of 4v2, 4v3 situations, and it would have put the ball in uh, Triada Zeon's court to then cluster up themselves and force a, groups, a group fight that they had no choice but to win.